Hello everyone. So this might be a little bit of a long video, but that's because it tackles a really important concept in your application, which is the GPA. So in this video, I'm going to answer four questions that you guys may have about your GPA, which is first of all, is the GPA important in your application? Second, are backlogs, you know, really bad for your application? Third is how much is a good GPA? And fourth is how can you compensate for a low or a mediocre GPA? Okay, so let's get started with the questions. So the first question is, is the GPA important in your application? And the short answer is yes, it's important. So the reason why colleges look for GPA in an applicant is like, it should be pretty obvious. It sort of denotes how well that candidate is in that particular subject area. So not only does it denote their knowledge and skill set and so on, but on top of that, it also shows that this, this candidate is good at, you know, studying and taking tests and, you know, passing classes. And colleges don't want to admit someone with a low GPA because it's more likely that that person will not be able to handle the stress of you know at stress of studying at like a master's or phd level program and will not be able to you know pass all their classes will end up failing may not may not even you know get a job afterwards and it's just really risky so that's why colleges look for candidates with a high gpa to admit so that they can be sure that this person you know will pass all their classes will be doing fine in tests and then you know they might even succeed after graduation so that's the first question Second question is how bad are backlogs in your application? So I know that some of you guys are watching and you, know, you might be worried about your backlogs. So what I want to tell you is that if you have backlogs, if as long as you clear them before your application, you should be fine, right? You should still be able to go, you know, go into like a decent college and it'll be okay. However, having a history of backlogs is not good on an application, especially when you're applying to like the top, you know, selective universities. So if we're looking at the top 25 or like maybe top 50 universities around the world, these guys are going to be extremely selective. So if you have like a history of backlogs, then it's going to be, you know, it's not, it's not going to look very good on your application, but you can still get into, you know, like top 100 universities, top 200 universities with backlogs. It's okay. As long as you clear them and, you know, if you can explain in your SOP why they happened, you know, what you learned from those challenges you faced and so on, then that might, um, that might help you compensate for that a little bit. Third question is how much is a good GPA? Now I wish I could tell you like a straight answer, like, okay, eight out of 10 is a good CGPA, but the truth is it's much more complicated than that. So there's no true answer here. The reason why is because each college calculates GPA differently. Okay. For example, in my college, you know, we were, we had like our grade, we had like our grade out of 10. And if a student was in like, say top five or top 10% of a class, they would get like, you know, 10 out of 10 in that class. And then the next 5% or next 10% of students would get like nine out of 10 and so on. Right. So this is relative grading. Whereas in my friend's college, you know, what they had was they had like a strict cutoff. So like anyone who got above 90% in a particular class would get a straight, you know, 10 on 10 GPA for that class. And you know, whoever got like, you know, above 80% would get maybe nine out of 10 and so on. And then, you know, some universities, they also grade out of like, you know, out of hundreds, so they give percentages. So it may be possible that, you know, like the batch topper would have like a, would have like a score of 75%. And that's like the highest that, you know, anybody has scored. So it's very difficult for me to tell you that, okay, this is the, no, this is the one perfect number that you need to hit in order to, you know, get into a good college. It's, very, it's really hard, but I don't want to leave you guys with nothing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you like an approximation that you can sort of use. Okay. So the approximation goes like this. Again, like a disclaimer, this is like just an approximation. It's just nothing that admissions officers have told me. It's just something that I've seen based on my experience in applying to college. Okay. So if your CGPA is in the top 5% of your class, then that is considered a great CGPA. Okay. If you're in the next 15% of your class, then you would have like a good CGPA. If you're in the next 20% of your class, then that would be like a decent GPA. And anything below that is not a good GPA at all. Okay. So let me give you guys an example of how this worked in my batch. Okay. In my batch, we had 110 students and I think 30 students had scored above eight GPA, right? So they had like an 8.0 or higher, like 30 of us. So among the 30 of us, I think there were, if you wanted to be in the top five percentile of 110, right? that means you would have to be in the top five, top six students in my batch. So I've seen the list. And if you're in the top six, top five percentile, then that means your GPA would have to be around 9.3 or higher. Again, this is specific to my batch. Okay. And if you want to be in the top 20% of my class, then your GPA would have to be around 8.3 or higher. Okay. So that means the top 20% of in my class, which means if there's a batch of 110, 20% of that is 22. So the top 22 students of my class had a GPA of approximately 8.3 or higher. And the top five or six students of my class had a GPA of approximately 9.3 or higher. So that's an example of how the split can work. Of course, it's going to be different depending on your university, depending on how your university grades it, how many students in your batch and so on. Now here's one more rule of thumb that you guys can use. It's like, if you're in the top 5% of your class, Okay. Then you can aim for, I would say like the top 25 or top 30 universities around the world. Like there's a decent chance that you might get in. 
If you guys are in the top 20% of your class, then you can aim for like, you know, the top 100 universities around the world. You should have a decent chance of getting in. If you're in the next 20%, I don't really have a rule of thumb. I can't tell you, you know, what university rank you can aim for because it really depends. So if you guys are watching this and you're sort of worried, you know, whether, you know, your GP, does your GPA meet the mark and so on. And if you have a low GPA or like a, or like a medium GPA, how can you sort of compensate it for that? Then that sort of leads me to the next question, which is how can you compensate for your GPA? Right. So even if you have a low GPA or like a mediocre GPA, it's OK, because what they do is they do a holistic evaluation. Right. That means it's more than this year GPA that they look at. They look at so all sorts of other things like, you know, GRE, GMAT, TOEFL, IELTS, projects, research work, internships, experience, letters of recommendation, statement of purpose, so much stuff. Right. But the best way for you guys to compensate for your GPA is through like the is through like those like the big exams, which is like the GRE, GMAT, LSAT and so on. Right? So if you're applying for a program that requires a GRE, then having a strong GRE score can help compensate for your low GPA a little bit. It'll never help you, you know, completely compensate, but it's still a really nice thing to have and it'll help you boost your profile a little bit. Right. So the having those, you know, big exams, having a good score, those big exams, you know, GRE, GMAT, LSAT, all those kind of things, that's going to help you sort of lift that GPA up a little bit. OK, but of course, there's more than that. There's also research work and projects and work experience. That's sort of like the whole package of applying to college. So if you guys are wondering how to build a strong profile for top universities around the world, I've already done a video on this. I'll leave a link in the description below. So that's it for our discussion on GPA. I hope you guys learned something. Now, keep in mind that all the like rules of thumb that I discussed in this video are just based on my approximations, based on what I've seen. They're not like, you know, gospel truth. And finally, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more graduate program related content. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.